next one is um, P for pushing away. Okay, and th this is really um, I, I understand to be pushing away both the thoughts and the feelings. Just for since you can't change them, it's sort of like the Serenity Prayer. You know, the things that you cannot change. Accepting that, I, I like the picture of taking my thoughts and worries, putting them in a shoebox, and put, putting them up on a high shelf in my closet. That's an image that really works for me. Or treating my my thoughts and feelings like a cloud that's sort of drifting across the sky. And I just watch it go by, but I don't really attend to it or buy into it. it it's sort of that non-judgmental stance of yeah, it's 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 there, but you you gently push it away. You don't thrash it away. Um, in um, acceptance and commitment therapy, they talk about having a thought without buying a thought, which, which would be, I'm thinking right now that I'm sad. Okay, I'm, it's not that I am sad, because I may or may not be. The language isn't always 100% accurate. But I'm having a thought right now that I'm sad. So I'll just note that, but I don't have to buy it. And then he would even say, treat those voices of sadness the way you would you're driving a car and you've got voices in the back of the bus that are screaming at you, hey, you're sad, you're sad, you're sad, and you just, oh, yeah, okay. Kind of like driving your minivan around and <laughs> the kids are back there, but you don't really have to buy them or attend to them, just note their presence and keep going. Or if you're on the computer and a pop-up ad comes on and you see it, you just close it and move on and keep doing what you're doing. But you, you don't stop and read and buy the item. <coughs> you note the annoying pop-up and click it, close it, and move on. So th this is that, that pushing away notion. So these are some things that this particular child did. I, I like this, write feelings on a whiteboard and then erase it. You, you, don't have to buy you don't have to buy all that stuff? By all those thoughts? All the stuff that comes up on a computer? No, you, you can just click it right off. I'll tell you more about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you later how that works too. <laughs> and, and so many of, of our feelings that we have and thoughts, we assume have inherent truth and validity and reality when they're, they're just, they're, they're like little, you know, burps is all they really are. <laughs> and they're just little rumblings in your tummy. You don't have to give them, you know, the time of day. Really, you can note them in any you want. Okay. And this one, um, now I hadn't coached this child or teacher, think to yourself, I am sad, I, I would have trained them to say, I'm having a thought that I'm sad. I'm noticing that I'm having a thought that I'm sad. Okay? And write that down and um, let it, just note its presence, but don't buy it. Don't necessarily give it validity. Yeah? I went to a training in Arizona last summer by Dr. Embry. Embry. And he has a, I'm trying to think of the name of the institution, but he has a lead on a piece of paper and the line different for the healing, and that he also talks about having thoughts as opposed to being your thought. Mm -hmm. And you fill it out, and you do the exercise, and you talk about it being fleeting, and how it comes like the season. Uh, right. And you can either go outside and let it flutter away, of course, and picking it from the garbage when you're done. But I mean, his whole concept is you don't have to be the feeling. You just yeah. have them, and you can choose how it comes <coughs> to stay. Yeah, big big difference. And we we can spend a lot of time on that one. Um, the T stands for other thoughts, having other thoughts. Um, you know, if you were really anxious right now, and let's say you, you're someone that, um, you know, sometimes gets so anxious that you might need to run out of the room or you start sweating, you, you might be coached by someone like Jill or me to look up at the um, tile up here and start counting the holes. Okay? Just take a minute, look, look up there and start counting how many holes there are in a particular square above you. Now, it doesn't mean you have autism, okay? <laughs> but, but it's, now some of you will like this and some of you will hate it, but it's, but it's a great way to get your mind on other things. For just count the number of sections in that light panel, okay? Don't multiply, you've got to add, okay? Go one, two, three, and do it slowly. The, those are examples of having other thoughts, um, using what's here, or counting silently, some people count their thoughts during a certain time period. Um, we have a number of people that really like this tearing paper into small pieces. That came up a lot. You know, I had little mixed feelings about is it destructive or not, but you know, if it's scrap paper that's going to be recycled anyway, I don't know that it's that big of a deal. Um, <coughs> let you guys decide. But that, that one seemed, that became pretty popular amongst the, um, the, the different folks that were doing this.
picking puzzles, color a pattern. So I, again, something to get Sudoku, of course, is really popular now, a good way to get, get your mind on other thoughts going other ways. Just buying some time and noticing that with time, the wave usually does recede and things get more, more tolerable. So I can try to get it to go. Okay. Maybe not. Last it's zooming. Not applicable. Right. How's that for a... Oh. Well, was and then finally, um, other distracting sensations. Um, Marsha Linehan says in her DVD, probably the number one thing she has found, distracting sensations, is to get an ice cube and hold it in your hand for one or two minutes. Now, if you have a very rare condition called cold-induced urticaria, you, you will get a rash and it's not good for you and that's how they diagnose it. So, you know, if you're one of those people and you get a severe rash from it, then you know that's not a good intervention for you. But, but for the rest of you, that, that can, and I've used that, it's terrifically um, quick and powerful, you know, especially for people that are self-abusive as, as an alternative. Um, and ice is, you know, pretty readily available. So, um, but these are some other things that, um, and, and again, you have to um, depend on the person. If a person has an eating issues, then probably this one wouldn't work, but for another person it would. Um, again, other distracting sensations. Anything, anything you want to add on that, Jill, or is that? Yeah, I mean, I think it works really well for self-injury no. stuff. Um, usually this is like really intense sensations, um, and I think some of this, like the holding of soft toy, also works really well. So it would be one of the self-soothes. This one tends to be things that um, they are so intense that they make your mind go there. So something super sour, something really hot, like hot salsa or one of those fireballs, mm -hmm. you know, sucking out a candy or something that's like, that's all you can attend to. Um, hot, too hot water, a little bit too hot, a little bit too cold. Um, so going to the bathroom, for instance, and washing your hands in cold water might be one. So anything that's just a little bit that doesn't cause any damage. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, I have a question about with the cutters. Um, Marsha always talks about the eyes. What instructions would you give a cutter on how to use the eyes? Mm -hmm. So I so you have any urge to self injure. So what you want to do is exactly the skills that we've been pulling out. Mm -hmm. We say that you know we're going to take something mm -hmm. that causes no tissue damage. The instructions are to hold that and we want you to focus on. It. Mm -hmm. And what you'll find is it hurts. Now, holding ice in your hand until it melts is actually, you know, hurts. And hopefully the function of their cutting it should function to help regulate the emotions just like their cutting does. So we ask them just to hold it and to focus on the pain. On in their hand or mm -hmm. on the area? Usually in their hand. Cut. Sometimes um, they can do it on an area, um, usually it's in the hand. The other thing that sometimes kids will, you know, isolate it, oh, can I put some salt on there? Apparently mm -hmm. salt on in the ice is colder, um, colder and colder. Yeah, it's ice cream, too, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm really sure for that. I'm a little yeah. vanilla. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just tell them, you know, you know, hold on. Usually you kind of discuss, you know, the ideas you're using at this time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let, let's do a 60-second turn to your neighbor and talk about what of this you're going to use and how you're going to use it. <laughs> 